8.30 sharp. Laura? Parole officer, Mr. Regal. Drive you to work. He'll even go in with you if you want him to. That's your decision. Fine, Laura. walls are so thick that you didn't hear who your friend was. The boy that pushed your parole. The little old boy that went to back for you, making restitution for that money, getting your job back. That little old boy is me, Shiva. Me. <laughs> no, they're saying out at the sheriff's office how when they lock up a girl, she gets fat, you know. Fat and flabby. She gets old looking before her time. But not you, Shiva. You're just as rangy as ever. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I've been on a special diet. Seven months, I've never had enough of it, hating you. Well, you didn't leave me nothing else I could do. Like a little puppy dog, you gotta spank her till she's house broke. I had to spank you. I don't know when or how, but I'm gonna destroy you, Woody. I'm gonna make you the sorriest man that ever lived. I only did it because I love you. Well, how do you think it was for me? You being away, locked up behind them walls, locked up away from me. Well, Laura, don't run from me. Don't run, Laura. Oh, 
find that room at Mrs. Poindexter's boarding house. Now, where are you going to get a better Lord, deal sir. than that? Clean sheets every Friday. Private bath. Television set. breakfast. With a heated day. You show up for $15 a week. Well, I got the world on a string. <laughs> Come on, you adjust to it. You want anything, just dial. Yeah, thanks. Oh. There you are. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. You give him a dollar. It's not enough. Are you aware that we're only making a dollar and a quarter an hour? Well, that puts us two bits in the lead. Ah. <laughs> okay, Nero. How much does this place cost? Oh, come on. It's only for one week. Besides, we got $520 in the bank. We got $110 in our kick. And a steady job, everybody needs a little relaxation and some luxury, even us. So why don't we comb the buzz out of our hair and get the tumbleweed out of our shoes and... Yeah? <laughs> okay, you win. I bet you don't. It's my business, Laura. Betting on people. You must go bankrupt 20 times a day. Every time you don't makes the times you do durable. Shall I go in with you? I wish you could go in instead of me. Buenos dias, Pedro. Buenos dias, senor Langway. Morning, Laura. Try to look at it this way. Experience isn't just what happens to a person. Experience is making what happens to you count. End of speech now. Come on in and go to work. Two spoons of sugar, Miss Laura. Do you still use two spoons of sugar? Miss Laura, help me.
panic's over. I'm, I'm sorry. <gasps> Don't you be nice to me, too. Now, there's a compliment I haven't had from too many kids. I'm sorry. I could stand anything except those smiling faces. Forgiving me the calculated niceness, the deliberate not mentioning it. Oh, you must be, um, uh, Laura Church, the girl who... Took the money. What's, what's the big emotional jazz? You did your time. Society's got its pound of flesh. New slavery. At least you're willing to talk about it. <laughs> Why not? Most people are in jail of one kind or another, but they don't know about it. Okay, so you made the real scene and you know what it's about. Now well, you can enjoy life. That's the beef. I didn't take the money. Some of my best friends uh, are innocent. And guys I grew up with, except they get their mail at Sing Sing and their suits run in stripes, but they didn't do it either. Check on what time those trucks are coming in. Oh, and Joe, give me some cigarettes. did what you wanted. Furs, jewelry, clothes. I don't know what I'd do without you, Anna. Find someone else for the job, I guess. Huh? But nobody else could. Would you mean? Uh, what's troubling you? Why don't you leave her alone? Anna, you know that little old California mine? The way when he's running, he's reaching out there for the wind, just for the pleasure of it. Trying to beat the sun that sets on the horizon. Well, that's me. Trying for Sheba. Just for the pleasure of the race. And knowing I gotta win it. No matter what. Now, Hannah, you and me, we've been together too long to have any misunderstandings now. You're a fine woman, Hannah. You're real fine. <laughs> I promise not to break my jaw, I'll tell you a secret. We're driving right through the center of town. No lectures, no strings, no bus tokens. How about it? I'll wait for the bus. I'll wait for the bus, thanks. No favors. It's just that uh, you're the prettiest girl we've seen in Texas, and we figure you deserve door-to-door -door service. We won't even ask ourselves up for a little drink. When you're on parole, you're not allowed to drink. Or to fraternize with men. Or don't you know the rules? There's nothing in the rules against common courtesy, I said. Look, Miss Church, everybody's been knocking themselves out trying to make things comfortable for you. But you don't want to let go of it, do you? You want to go right on suffering. Well. Let's go, Todd.
Where'd you get a key? Jerry. Yeah, he and me we used to share most everything together. You know, you ought to get out of this, Doc. It's no good. It was full of a lot of bad memories. And bad memories got a way of kind of hanging on. Like iron hangs on to a magnet. That's why I got you all these nice things over here. Dresses and the fur. All the sweet smelling toilet water. Yeah. I know what you like. And I know what you hunger for. Like these records. A lot of new albums come out since you played these. And you like to dance and go for a long ride in a car. How would you know? Jerry told me. Yeah. Jerry told me all about you, Sheila. Yeah, Jerry used to like to kind of brag. You filthy liar. I ought to kill you, Woody. Well, I see Mr. Regal hasn't told you yet, huh? I'm your advisor. That's right. Appointed by the Board of Pardons and Paroles. Now, every month, when they send you a parole report in, down at the bottom of that page is a little space. And that's for me, for my comments and my recommendations, since I'm responsible for your behavior. Don't you forget that, Shiva. Oh, come on, Shiva, honey. You just don't want to face life like it really is, the facts. I know you. I know you better than Jerry ever could. I know what you like. I know what kind of people you come from. And I know what you need. Why don't you take a look behind Jerry's picture? Go on. Jerry and I were married. I stopped. You know that. What do you know? I stopped. Of course, when Jerry died and I was all alone again, I had to try to forget something. There is only one way to forget a man, Sheila. That's with another man. Be, gentlemen. A few martinis, but very dry. Yeah. You all must be new around El Paso. You uh, ever hear Alamogordo? Yeah, isn't that the place they exploded the first atomic bomb? That's right. Well, that's only about 60 miles from here, see. And there was a scientist on that project, and that man was a stickler for dry martinis. So what he'd done was he took a bottle of dry vermouth and he attached it to the bomb. You get the picture? So that way, when it blows, the vermouth blows, too. And it gets all mixed up in the atmosphere. Well, ever since then, we got around here what we call vermouth fallout. So what I do is, every night about 6 o'clock, I set out my martini glasses, 
let them soak up the outside air a little bit, and I bring them back in, pour in the straight gin. My friends, I want to tell you that around El Paso, we have got the driest martinis in the world, uh, plus a built-in chain reaction. Well, we're in your hands. A little lonesome over there. I, uh, I think the two by the window are better. You by the curtain? You're kidding. Well, let's, uh, let's flip. Heads. Heads. Nobody saw it. Just half of uh, El Paso. There's your clothes. Come on, hurry up, get dressed. Will you zip me up, please? How do you feel? Better. We've been out 24 hours. Well, uh, you had some pressure on you. You just let your hair down. Pressure? That's the story of my life. Ooh. I'm suffering from a case of the bends. It's when you go too deep. I wouldn't mind if I could drag Woody down with me. It's his name again. Why not? Some people got smallpox. I got Woody. He's the one who sent me up, you know. He's a 
want to arrange to... No, you don't believe that, but that's all right. I guess you don't care anymore. You forget where the truth ends and where the lies start in. And everything gets all mixed up. stopped me just this side of Fort Worth. They searched my car. They found $2,000 under the front seat. Brought me back for trial. The worst part of it was the company believed I was innocent. Till it came out that I had paid off $1,800 in bills the week before I left. I told the court Woody had given me the money. He was Jerry's friend and his employer. And Woody took the stand. He said he'd never given me a cent. Twenty-two days later. I heard maybe you uh, been drinking a little bit. Huh? Why not? Isn't that the way you planned it? Oh, no, Sheba, honey, you shouldn't lie like that, not in front of strangers. Why would I do a thing like that? I'm responsible for your good behavior to the parole board. Well, I guess I just can't let you out of my sight. Woody, please, just go away. Please, go away. Come on, Laura, let's go. Bye, Woody. Took a ride for nothing. There's some life over there.
Can I help you? Maybe. We're looking for a particular kind of bull, Woody Biggs. The question is whether he's a brave bull. We figure we'd like an answer. We need to get an account settled. I do the books for him. I can help you. Well, this is kind of a personal account. And we figure we'd like to get it settled this morning while the bruise still shows. You both look intelligent. Be intelligent. Be gone before he comes back. Well, we can't do that. It's like when a pilot crashes. If he's able to walk, they get him right up there again to fly. That's the way it is with us. You understand? I don't expect him back for hours. We'll wait. I have to excuse me. We're busy around here. You know, somebody should uh, invent a horn to stampede women like that. What do you think? Should we forget this joker? We hang around or we come back? No, let's cut out. Leave a message with the umpire. We're leaving now. Tell Biggs I said he was a slob. If I catch him with Laura Church, I'll pack him in cotton. say it didn't, well, they're gonna have Woody Biggs on the back. That's a mighty heavy burden. Now, what's on your mind? It'll keep. Church. This is Buzz Murdoch. I'm Todd Stiles. How do you do? Glad to know you. We're friends of hers, and frankly, we're a little concerned. There's some things we want to ask you. Oh? Huh? Well, I guess it sounds like none of our business, but that's the way friends are. What do you want to know? Laura claims that this uh, Woody Biggs stole the money from the company and made it look like she did it. She was tried and convicted according to the facts and evidence available. Whether the facts are just or unjust, whether the evidence is circumstantial or not circumstantial, that is not for me to say. But now Laura Church has rejoined society. And whatever I can do to make sure she doesn't fail it again, or that it doesn't fail her, this I will do. That she should accuse Mr. Biggs? Well, she made quite an issue of it at the trial. Yet he overlooked it. He repaid all the money that was stolen, he turned every wheel in Texas to have her released the first moment she was eligible for parole. Are these the acts of an enemy? He really is her advisor. Look, well, we've, you know, we've been around. We see a lot of people. We don't usually get this feeling about our own girl. Don't you? The more you get around, the more you come to know. Feelings are usually wrong. 
based on all kinds of shifting sands. Memories, crimes, emotions, prejudice in all kinds of disguises, all mixed together. All self-serving. Laura Church is a lovely looking girl. And like most of society, you tend to judge her biologically. You either do not know about or prefer to ignore the scar tissue inside, which a pretty outside conceals. When my son is grown, will he remember this Sunday? The sun in his face, the love of a father to lean on? Or like Laura Church, would he have parents whose lives have set a bad example, causing him to grow beautiful to see, but inside bleak, lonely, and desperate? Thank you, Mr. Rigal. Oh, thank you. Uh, Laura needs friends, the right ones. Well, time for the baby snap. I know. Biggs an apology. He finds Laura in our room, he could have figured us for a couple of wise guys. So why'd she try to cough him up? Well, you saw what he did. He covered for it. He told us to forget it. You know, he makes a lot of sense. Good-looking girl, a Saturday night, a sad story. We could be wrong, too, you know. Smell that air. They say the best things in life are free, so take a deep breath, because it's the real stuff. Good for the long view and hangovers. I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. I'm glad you brought me up here. At least up here, I don't feel like a mudworm or tomorrow's headline. <laughs> don't I sing a sad song? You got it bad. Yeah, how do you get it good again? Well, if I knew that, we could package it and make a fortune. Smell that air. Why'd you bring me up here? That's a silly question. Did you ever look in the mirror? Well, you haven't made a pass. Well, I just got here. But you're not going to. Oh? Well, you got some kind of special radar or something? The best. Okay, so we talk. We were at the Pens this morning when uh, Biggs came back from town. He looked like someone used him for a sardine can. He wouldn't let on who did it. Why? Why did I do it? I suppose I could figure that. He pushed you in a corner and you pushed back with a knife. Why did he come for you? That doesn't make sense. Woody didn't push me. He didn't come near me. Now, Woody didn't come near me this morning. He stood by Jerry's picture, and he said, Sheba, honey, you're about done running. Maybe you don't know it, but I do. Then something kind of blew up in my head, remembering how Jerry died, crushed in those pens by running cattle. And how right after that, Woody started coming around, calling me Sheba. And then, like somebody turned on a light, there it was. What? What he meant was Bathsheba, David and Bathsheba, the 
king who killed the captain so he could take the captain's wife. Well, that's a long jump, Laura, and uh, it's a rough accusation. Could be. Woody was there when it happened. And then when it didn't work out for him, he tried to break me by having me put in jail. And then getting me out on a string. I felt that string pulling me this morning. Pulling me toward him. So help me for a minute. I wanted him to keep pulling me toward him. I ran into the kitchen, I got the knife, and I struck at him. Do you understand? I struck at him. Because of what he did to Jerry? Because of what he almost did to me. Well, what happens now? I don't know. When I cut him, everything went out of me. I don't know if I'll have the strength next time to strike at him. be so stubborn. You know, we could come out of this looking pretty stupid. Look, aren't you the guy that always says, don't look for the logic in human conduct, expect the unexpected, and you'll never be disappointed? Well, that's for other people. That doesn't give us a license to be kooks. What about that other jazz you're always talking about, that Freudian stuff about secrets? I'm not always talking about anything. It's just I learned a few things in school, and I try to pass them on so you too can be a real popular kid. Okay, let's hear it. What? What, um, what Freud has to say about secrets. Hmm. Well, uh, Freud says we can't keep secrets. That uh, self-betrayal oozes from every pore. And that the unconscious need for uh, self-punishment has to be considered one of the most basic forces shaping the destiny of man. So, let's give it a try. accidents around the house. One sure way is to uh, stay out of other people's kitchens. Where is he? Get her out of town. Today, tonight, but get her out of El Paso. Well, the parole board might take a dim view of that. Wouldn't that be better for everybody? The worst she could get is the rest of her sentence. Lady, you ever been locked up like for one month? Not one month, two months, years, ever since I came here. Well, I don't see any leg irons and manacles. They don't show, do they? Well, there's a lot of things around this place that don't show. Where was uh, Jerry Church killed? Which pen? You see, Freud was right. Who are you? What do you want? Why do you come around here and make trouble? We haven't made any trouble. Why do you say we're making trouble? You saw it, didn't you? How did it happen? And where was Biggs when it was all happening? Well, I guess we'll ask the big man himself. Leave him alone. I've been through enough for today. Thank you. 
Rudy, they've been asking questions, but I didn't tell them anything. Where's it? About Jerry. Well, what about Jerry? How he was killed. Right out here, Southern Stampede. Heard of cattle just like this one, Mexican Mesa cattle, rodeo star. Uh-huh. Hannah told us how it happened. I said nothing. You said nothing about what? I'm gonna get me a man for a bookkeeper. I've been meaning to for some time. Women, they ain't got no savvy. Ain't that the way you boys see them? Woody. If you boys want to talk to me, you can tell her to leave. I can't stand the sight of her. You can tell her that I'm gonna take me a wife any day now. And wives are kind of funny about having females on the payroll. Why don't you tell her? Let's say Hannah was right. Let's say that Jerry was in there and that you started the cattle running. Say anything you want. Don't bother me now. The horn. That could have started him. One of the two of you clear out of here. I was out late last night and up early this morning. Just because I got a few stitches under my arm don't mean I can't use it. That's not counting my right. Now go on, get out of here. Why don't we try something first? Why don't we put you in there? See how you make out. How's that sound? Well, I say you better put on a few pounds before you try anything. Ask you something. What did you expect to do if they stampeded? The truth? What else? I wasn't thinking about that. But uh, don't forget, I used to cross the West Side Highway when I was six years old during rush hour. That's a couple of hundred steers compared to a couple of hundred diesel trucks. Good morning. Hi. Same deal. No tokens? No tokens. <laughs> 